Hi everyone, I'm Gadis of Made by Mutiara and welcome back to my channel. And today I'm going to be doing my 2021 bullet journal setup. So in 2020, I started my very first bullet journal where I used it mostly for like the practical productivity reasons. So I'm gonna be using the spreads that I really like from the 2020 journal and then using it again for my 2021 journal. My designs and style tends to be more on the minimalist, beginner-friendly side where I'm only using like a few brush pens and monoline pens. All of them will be listed down in the description below so just take your own bullet journal and let's get started. For my bullet journal, I'm gonna be making use of this font stencil to trace out some of the letters and the numbers just to make it easier for me. I'm also gonna be using this few pastel Tombow Dual brush pens, some monoline pens and small brush pens. This is my old bullet journal, the one that I used for 2020 and it's the Lectum 1917 and the pages are so thin so I'm really happy that I won this bullet journal from Notebook Therapy because look at how thick the pages are, I love it! This is the A5 size Gentle Giant bullet journal from Notebook Therapy and I also like the velvet cover, that's a big bonus. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to write down the key, hence the letter K. So these are some of the basics that maybe you want to include for your bullet journal. But yeah, this is what my key looks like. The next thing I'm going to do is the cover page for 2021. So I outlined the numbers 2021 and I'm just going to make it simple and write hello 2021 just so it's like a hello 2021, like a greeting for a new year. And for the numbers, I'm filling it with the colors that I chose, which is this for colors. So you'll see them throughout the journal. So I thought it's a nice way to introduce the color theme at the very start. Next, I'm going to be drawing in the grid spacing cheat sheet, which I think most people have at the start of their bullet journal. So what I'm doing is to utilize the four different corners of the page, as well as the four colors that I've chosen for the start of my journal. And each corner of the page is going to be divided by two, three, four, five. So it's actually easier for me to find like, oh, how many boxes, how many columns and rows that I want to find. And yeah, I just thought of finding a way to utilize most of the space. I don't know if it'll work, but we'll just have to see by the end of the year. On the next page, I'm writing down my affirmations and reminders of 2021. So I didn't like the initial design that I made earlier, so I used another stencil style to draw in the numbers 2021. And I really like this page because these are some of the quotes I've chosen that have been very relevant towards what 2020 has given us, which is a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of uncertainty. So these are some of the quotes that I want to use to remind myself coming into 2021 whenever you know I'm feeling all this uncertain feelings again like yeah no one is you and that is your power done is always better than perfect I've only come up with some of these quotes so if you have any ideas of what quotes I should add for the last three just let me know down in the comments below I would love to know what kind of quotes were relevant to you or what kind of quotes that you like to tell yourself whenever you face like times of difficulty and yeah, here's the page for my 2021 affirmations and reminders. And up next, we have my future log, which is basically where I write in all of the things that are important to me, like my birthdays, key dates, important events. And what I do is to just divide per page into four different months, where on the right, I write in the first letter of the month, and on the left, I write in the calendar. So I'm just going to pause for a while and show you what my 2020 future look looks like and you can see how filled it is and I actually don't mind that because it kind of reminds me of how well utilized my bullet journal is but now when I look at my 2021 spread, I'm thinking about how nice and clean it is so I don't know, I'm thinking maybe next year I should try to be a bit more neater and you know, not as cluttered as I am in 2020 but I don't know, we'll just have to see how it goes. One of the pages that I really like from my 2020 bullet journal is this page here called my gratitude log. So what I did in 2020 is to just doodle something for each month that I'm grateful for, like 
thanks to the lockdown, I was also able to foster some cats, which has been the very thing that got me through quarantine. It's the small things like this that I like to take note of. So whenever I look back at my memories, then I can see like, oh, this happened in 2021. The next page is my 2021 growth tracker for my social media pages. So in 2020, I did this and I wanted to upgrade the page for 2021. And I know it's not important, but I like being able to see how my numbers progress over the course of the year. So yeah, I'm leaving enough space to write down three to four items that I want to track. And I have three for now, but I predict that I will be adding one more by next year. So after filling the first letter of each month, the three things that I'll be tracking this year are my Instagram followers, my YouTube subscribers, which I just reached 1,000 subscribers, yay! So I cannot wait to see what milestone I reach next year. And also my Etsy shop sales. I know that's not a social media metric, but it's something that I focus a lot of my energy in. So it is something that I want to track over the course of 2021. On the next page, I'm tracking my goals for 2021 and this is a bit of a fail. I thought of like having the alphabet at the back but now it's not visible after I wrote in 2021 so like ugh, no point but never mind. The four areas that I'm setting my goals for is number one, my YouTube channel, number two, my Etsy shop and any other income streams I have for myself. Number three, my creative goals, like what kind of skills I want to develop in the future. And last but not least, my own personal goals that I want to set for myself. And for the next page, is a completely new spread and it's the only time this spread can happen, which is my 30 before 30 checklist. Woohoo! Because I'm going to be turning 30 years old and yeah, if you cannot tell, that's my celebration claps. And I thought it would be interesting to write down a list of things that I want to do, watch, see, experience before I turn 30 years old or by the time I turn 30 years old. Since, you know, it's quite exciting to turn a new decade. And the only thing, unfortunately, I have on this list is to try a deep dish pizza. So I'm open to any suggestions that you may have. So yeah, just let me know down in the comments below your suggestions. For the next page I'm doing here is like a 2020 reflections as well as a 2021 reflections. So I'm going to be filling in the 2021 first on the left and it's a good way to like, you know, reflect on the whole year just to see what I'm proud of, what I'm grateful for, what I'm scared of and what I want to improve on on the next year. So I'll only be filling this probably on maybe the last week of the year, which I'm not there yet. This is why it's still empty. So yeah, and then I'm going to be doing the same thing this time next year for the 2021 column. So I'm excited for that. In the next page, I'm doing a very simple spread where I do a brain dump for things to do with my YouTube channel on the left and my Etsy shop on the right. So if I have any ideas when it comes to doing videos, I'll write it there. And if I have any like ideas of what to sell in my Etsy shop, then I'll put it inside here as well. For the last page of my spread, for my yearly spread at least, is this thing called a uh, expand tracker. So I've not done this before, but I want to be a bit more conscientious with my spending. So I thought of, you know, hey, I've not used the letters X and R before. Maybe that will look nice. It's not. It looks weird. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I have, I, you know, like you have an idea in your head that you think will go well, but it doesn't. So this is kind of like what happens but it's okay it's my own bullet journal i'll i'll live with it i thought of doing something different it doesn't pan out that's fine but yeah so this is what it looks like when it's completed and now on to my monthly spread. So for the very first page of my monthly spread, I normally do like a quote of the month, but I don't really have a quote for now. So I thought of using the same font stencil to write down the first three letters of the month. 
And I always start off with the calendar. I don't know why. I feel like this is the important part of my monthly spread. I don't do any other monthly spreads. And of course, I do very minimal decorations, which is why the calendar is maximized to the size of the page. And I choose to use the horizontal lines for my dates because I find it to be a bit cleaner instead of doing the boxes. One thing I like to do is to incorporate my mood tracker into my calendar. So this is what my 2020 calendar looks like with the mood tracker filled in where the dates are. And yeah, on the right, I wrote a list of things I consume because I thought it'd be interesting to journal down like what kind of movies I watch, what kind of TV series I started. And I've not done it before, so I thought it might be interesting to try. Now on to my weekly spread. Yes, we are not doing any other monthly spread because I'm like, I need to chop chop. I need to go on to what I'm planning for the week. So again, this is reference from Boho Berry's video where she taught how to use the Alistair method. Or you can also call it the rolling weekly where I just write down the task of what I want to do that week and just take note of the progress each day. And on the right side of the page, this is where I draw the boxes for what I do daily. So I know there are nine boxes, so I'm going to be coloring in two of them and making them into like doodle boxes or like quote boxes later on. So usually on my daily speech, I would normally like fill it in the night before just to remind myself, okay, what does I need to do tomorrow? Like, oh, I need to reply emails. I need to send these files or I need to post on Instagram. So this is how I utilize my bullet journal in general. I don't like to have many pages, just a few pages to fill in for what I need. At the very top of the page, this is where I fill in my habit tracker. So once again, this habit tracker will be visible for the entire month. And in order for me to do that, I have to cut off some of the paper so that this will be visible. So I think this is called making into a Dutch door. Again, this is a reference to Boho Berry's video. I'll put the link to that in the description below if you want to check it out. But yeah, I really like doing this because I do like to see my habits progress over the course of the month of whether I'm being productive or whether I'm slacking. But yeah, this is all for my monthly spread. It's pretty much the same every single month. I don't like to flip to too many pages when it comes to journaling in at the end of the day. So if you watch until the end of the video, you'll see how I fill in my other weeks with the same style. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's like not the most fancy or the most complicated, but actually that's what I like about my bullet journal. I'm still a beginner considering that this will be my second ever bullet journal. And as a beginner, I'm really just focusing on the practical aspects of using it for productivity and time management and of course it's ideas for what kind of spreads that you can include for your own bullet journal let me know down in the below which spread is your favorite and if you have any ideas of what i should do before i turn 30 years old oh my god just let me know down in the comments below today's video shout out goes to yoshika of calligraph fusion i really do love her lettering work so go and give her a follow as well thank you so much for leaving a comment in my previous video which is all about lettering gifts so you can check that out if you haven't watched it yet if you want a shout out in my next video then do leave a comment down below or you can also share this video on instagram in your insta stories and be sure to tag me at made by mutiara if you like watching me set up my bullet journal give this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so you can also press the bell to be notified when i upload a new video and yeah thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate all of your support i'll see you in the next video bye